Alright, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, I lost all three belts on this diesel Suburban. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered a three brand new top cog belts from Rock Auto. They should be here in about a week. So I'm thinking, why not pull the heads and change the head gaskets while I'm waiting. Alright, so I've had these uh, Felpro head gaskets for a while now. It seems like as good of a time as any to throw them in there. These are the 9521 PTs, which are 10 thousandths of an inch thicker than uh, the factory 6.5 gaskets. Also got a set of ARP studs to throw in there as well. So uh, let's disconnect the batteries, pull the turbos, and start taking stuff apart. The turbo comes out again. Right, so I'm trying to get this wiring harness out of the way and I need to remove this alternator to facilitate that. There's a shiny chrome alternator with a long ass bolt. Alright, so 16 bolts later, the intake can come out, maybe, it's a coolant free design so you don't have to worry about spilling coolant anywhere. Okay, so there is the injection pump and all the spaghetti lines, uh, you've got, oh, I forget in here. I see this is your feed, feed line back here to the air water, uh, air water, fuel water separator. And this is your return line. And it looks like everything's doing okay here. All right, the water crossover is loose, but it will not come out yet. It is stuck between the oil filler tube and the cruise control. Um, let's take this vacuum thing off the cruise control. That'll probably give us the room. I think it's just a couple bolts down here. I have to loosen up those bolts anyway when you do the uh, fuel enrichment on the injector pump, so this shouldn't be a big deal, right? This should be easy. Uh, this engine's so funny. Half the fasteners are metric and half of them are standard. Half inch, yeah. So this thing's finally coming out. It's putting up a bit of a struggle. There we go. Okay, so with that coolant crossover out, you can see in here a little bit better. Uh, this passenger side cylinder head looks like it's fairly free to come out, you know, once you take off the injector lines. And uh, this back switch back there, whatever that is, that looks like an electrical connection. I should just pop off. Uh, the right head, I see I got that bracket I need to remove because that has the uh, transmission TV cable 
And it also has all this power steering stuff up here in front of it. Um, I don't think the pump itself needs to be removed. But I gotta remove the uh, AC brackets and the power steering reservoir for sure. So let's do that. And the power steering reservoir is held on by these two bolts. The longer one goes on the left, I think. Yeah, longer one on the left. <sighs> All right, well, I'm back at it the next day. I'll show you what I got done here. Ran out of light yesterday. Um, but yeah, the power steering is loose. And I am removing the injector lines from the injectors and from the pump. I've got just a couple more of those to go. This back one was giving me some trouble yesterday, so I gave it up. I was just losing my daylight. Um, trying to get the wiring harness out of the way still. It's routed underneath those injector lines, which I guess is the best way to route it, but it's kind of in the way. And I'm going to get this EGT temperature probe out of the way. There we go. Um, I'll just let it hang for now. And this AC box is sure in the way. Here comes the diesel. Oh. Alright. Got another one loose. Right. I'm keeping all these in order on the side, so uh, the order that I like, take them out, I just reverse it to put them back in. Hopefully that works for me. Here's a uh, temperature sensor. I should just zip tie this thing up out of the way or something, I don't know. Um, thinking about removing this rubber line for the injector pump. That'll give me a little more room to play around with this, these harnesses and stuff, so I'll do that real quick. Alright, yeah, that's looking pretty open now on top of the engine compartment, so uh, now we're going to come down here and we're going to start taking off these crossover pipes that I built for the turbo. And I think I'm going to do the, the exhaust manifolds on the heads for now. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get to these things. If I can pull the heads off and put them back on with these manifolds in place, that'll be nice. So I'm just going to remove this crossover pipe and we'll go from there. Crossover pipe will come out. Valve cover bolts are half inch. Go figure. So I'm using like a half inch wrench. So you want to do the ones with the studs, and these are the two middle ones, and uh, 13 on the outer bolts. You gotta love it, right? Gotta love it. Pulling the valve cover off. Let's see how tight this is gonna be. The bolts weren't very tight. That wasn't too bad. I should probably put a new gasket on that one. Yeah. Um, a little bit dirty. Not too bad. Alright, and I see here are all the, the rocker assemblies. So we're gonna pull all these rockers out, push rods, so I can get to these. Uh, the head bolts. 
Yeah, yeah. not too bad. Makes me wonder if the camshaft is flat. I'll have to look up the, the lift, <laughs> the uh, net lift, or the net lift, the raw lift, whatever you want to call it, on the camshaft and see how much it is. Tight over here. Ooh. <laughs> I've got a feeling we have some issues with the head bolts too, but we'll see what happens. Alright, let's see how tight these things are. It's not hard to get in this engine compartment. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to crawl inside and and uh, muscle these things loose. Uh, which means I should probably put the camera in a safer spot. So um, later. Alright, well the uh, studs are all, well, let's see, the bolts are all broken loose now. I used a three foot breaker bar to make it a little easier so I can do it just one handed. It's just so tough to lean over this engine compartment. And it looks like these guys all go into the water jacket. So we'll have to seal all the studs. When we uh, do that, but I'm having to switch to a three-eighths inch ratchet because wrong way. Because um, I don't have the room to use my half-inch drive back here in my deep sockets. But uh, I'm fixing to pull this head. Got a nice puddle of water with a tinge of antifreeze all over my garage floor now. Um, I recommend when you do this, pull a lower bolt first so you can drain all the water. Maybe you can uh, keep the water out of your uh, oil. Because I'll have to definitely change the oil after this one. Definitely. All right, well, this head's about to get pulled, and I'm betting this thing weighs probably about 100 pounds or so, and I don't like the idea of rustling it over the side of the Suburban, so I'm just gonna use my engine hoist, and we're gonna pop this thing out and uh, carry it to freedom. So uh, let's see how it goes. It's a little tight on room with that exhaust manifold on there. Let's see how we do. I'm hitting in the back here, so let's see here. Let's see if we can go forward a little bit here with the whole thing. There we go. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and pump it up a couple times. Okay, keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Still clear. Still clear. We got it all the way. There it is. Cool. That's good. It's moving back. Yeah. All right, and there it is. You can see my height temp. Uh, like gasket stuff on the exhaust stuff here. 
This looks like a crappy factory gasket. No wonder it blew. Uh, so we got a lot of water in this cylinder here. Can you guys see that? Look here. Back, going forward, going forward, front cylinder. That's where we're losing our water right there. At least one of them anyway. We have to pull the other side. Oh. oh. <laughs> I think this is part of the gasket. I don't know if that was an issue before. Uh, let's see here. I guess this sat in there like that. So I don't know if it just ripped during the pull or if something actually came loose, he bonded, but so we've got a, a, a fell pro going in next. So hopefully that'll do a little bit better than this. Oh shoot, guess what this is? This is a fell pro. <laughs> well, I hope my fell pro is better than this fell pro. Let's see, this is a 970, uh, no, 9701. PT. Can you guys read that? Maybe not. 9701PT. Let's see what our gaskets are. Okay. We're replacing this with a 9521PT. So, let's look that up and see what's going on there. Alright, well I just measured the the bore on the engine, I'm getting a 4.085. So let's look that up as well. Let's see if this is a 6.2 or a 6.5. All right, so here's the uh, cylinder head. I cleaned it up a little bit with a, a two by two steel block with some 120 grit. And it looks pretty good. The biggest problem, of course, is this front cylinder right here. You can see how it's got more rust in the chambers than the other ones. The other ones don't have any rust. And uh, there's a little bit of a, of a low spot right there. And uh, these heads should probably be resurfaced five or ten thousandths but I don't have the time you saw the gaskets I'm using they are uh, ten thousandths thicker so that will help uh, with the um, conformability of the gasket so providing the other head looks halfway decent they're going back on well, this breaker bar is making short work of these uh, cylinder head bolts. But I am a little worried about torquing these things back into place. Am I going to get good access to get the torque I need? We will find out. All right, well, I've got a problem here. I'm trying to take off this very last bolt from the head, and there is a bracket from the steering column, like a steering column support bracket, that is in the way. There's like a little flange that comes around, and it's right there where I need to be. Um, I try a short, short socket on that bolt, but now I can't get to it because of the coil spring. The valve spring. So, um, I'm gonna have to modify that bracket. Uh, there's a bunch of wires in the way I gotta get out of there. You know, I'm tempted to just get my cutoff wheel and just make a couple of V cuts in there. But I've got oil cooler lines running right below it. And I don't know if I can control that monster in that tight location. It would make short work of the problem though. Boom, boom, done. 
Um, but I think I'd probably be safer just using my grinder, my heavy duty grinder. I've got a quarter inch grinder. And just slowly trim away the extra metal until I get clearance for the big socket in the breaker bar. So let's cover up the engine and we'll do that. That sucks. Alright, it's time to make some noise. Alright, well I notched that bracket pretty good. This should certainly discourage all you guys from doing this on your own. <laughs> I hope you find it entertaining. There we go. Try. That was a pain. I think that's the last of them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Again, I'm pulling this thing with the uh, exhaust manifold attached to it. So I had to pop the dipstick out real quick. There may be an issue with the steering column. Uh, I was going to pull this gasket up before it gets damaged. I want to look at that later. Oh, I did find out these uh, gaskets are the same gaskets. They're both Velpros. The only difference between the two gaskets is the gasket I bought is ten thousandths of an inch thicker. But uh, they're both the exact same Velpro gasket, really. Okay, I think this thing's coming out without removing the steering column. Yeah. All right, we got clearance. Clearance. Another hundred pounds of cast iron. Alright, so we'll this thing spin. Yeah, it spins pretty good. Alright, so um, again, we're looking at the cylinder heads. Um, nice and black and suit. Might be an issue with a valve seat, but not. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, again, front cylinder, rust in it. So I'm not sure why this thing's blowing the front cylinders out. It's kind of weird. Um, you know, the way the 
the coolant system works, the water pump pumps water into the block on both sides and then there's another thermostat on top that pumps water through the heads. Um, it's kind of weird. So I mean this, this front cylinder gets a lot of cooling especially compared to the back. Well, the backs are doing fine. Maybe that's just the way it is with these 6265s. Looking at the pistons here, uh, you can see that front cylinder has got a little rust in there just from sitting for a couple of days. That's where the blown gasket was again. I don't see any signs of a blown gasket here though. But obviously, um, you know, it's blown out through the water to the water jacket. And then of course when it cools down, the pressure in the uh, radiator pushes the water back into the cylinder what makes it rust. So you lose all your water driving down the road because of the pressure from the engine. And then when it cools down the water gets sucked back into the cylinder. So you lose lose. But uh, the other ones are rust free. The water is just from pulling the heads. But yeah, front cylinder, both sides. That's an odd one. But I got a lot of cleaning to do. And I'm gonna replace that uh, oil pressure sender while I am back here. I'm also gonna do a little bit more grinding on this bracket over here. You guys see that there? Yeah, it's kind of hard to show. Right there. There's the grinding, the big old notch I cut in there. I'm gonna cut that just a little bit deeper to make sure I have room for my torque wrench. Yep. Time to clean. <laughs> 